Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I am currently a Title I Reading Readiness Teacher. My new title. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to share with you guys today a little bit of information about my fourth interview. So yes, I just got this tutor job, but I randomly got a call and I'll tell you guys all about that and kind of how it went um, after my little intro. All right, so yeah, I randomly got a call. I don't even believe I applied for this position and it was on a Friday. Well, technically last Friday, I guess. And they were like, we have two positions open one for a third grade starting in October until the middle of December before winter break, and a second grade position starting either beginning of October or November all the way until the end of the year. And I was like, oh my gosh, calling them back right away. I was super excited and just like, wow, this is an amazing opportunity to have a full-time, basically a full year full-time position um, that will for sure get me a job next year, like, unless something weird happens. So I was super excited. I called them back right away to schedule an interview and they said, let's do it on Monday and whatever. So we went ahead and went with Monday. So, um, and it was after work and whatever I go through the whole day I was super anxious about it I didn't even want to film a video because I was worried I was gonna jinx it and everything like that so anyways fast forward to the end of the day on Monday I drive to the school for the interview I'm all ready I had done some practice on different questions I had assumed a little bit that they would be similar to like the other interviews and especially the other long-term sub interview. So I would practice those questions a lot and I have some tips for you guys. I, I believe they helped me. Um, I hope they helped me and I'll give you guys those at the end, but I just want to tell you the little backstory and then I'll give you some advice. So anyways, um, yeah, I was like so nervous. Didn't even want to film a video about it. And um, I get there and the power's out because we had some really bad storms. And I was like, oh my gosh. So they tell me, oh, we'll actually do a phone interview. We'll call you later tonight. So I get home and I'm freaking out because I've never done a phone interview before. And so I'm like looking up videos and like practice questions and stuff like that to prepare because I had never done one and I was super nervous. Well, I get a call like maybe 10 minutes before my scheduled time and the principal says, you know, I don't want to do some people on the phone and some people in person. So let's just have you come in tomorrow. And I was like, great, don't have to worry about the phone interview. So we schedule for the next day for Tuesday and I'm like, okay, I have the whole night to like relax and calm down and de-stress and all that. So then I'm trying to tell us as quick as I can, but basically Tuesday, I go to the interview. Um, I feel like it goes okay. I was really like nervous. I was talking really fast. Um, the question, like a couple of them threw me off. There was one about the constructivist learning theory that I quick had to like do a little research on like right then and there um, because they gave me the questions ahead of time. Um, there was one about closing the achievement gap and I'll include all those questions on the bottom information bar for you guys because I actually looked back at my other interview questions from my previous videos and they helped me prepare a lot I think. Anyways, so yeah, if you guys are learning about the constructivist learning theory, hold on to your notes because you might be asked them later. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had never thought I would be asked that, so <clears throat> anywho, so yeah, anyways, um, fast forward that he said he would tell me that he'd call me the next afternoon, so I'm waiting all day, super anxious, 
and I'm just gonna show you a short clip from the morning just talking about how I was super anxious and how I didn't get a very good um, vibe from the interview and I was really waffling back and forth but I had a feeling I probably didn't get it so <clears throat> let me show you guys that I'm feeling a lot of anxiety this morning I've been going back and forth about if I feel like I did well or not. Um, there's some things that I feel like I did really well and some things I feel like I didn't. I tend to have a really good gut feeling when I walk out of an interview whether I got it or not. Some of the other interviews when I walked out I just felt like they didn't go well. I felt like People weren't smiling, they weren't happy, so um, I'm having that feeling from this one as well. So you can see I was super anxious, just like, ugh. And anyways, so then fast forward to the end of the day, still hadn't gotten the call. He said he called by afternoon, which can literally mean like 11.30 to 5.30, so I was like, ugh, when is he gonna call? I wanna be ready. Like every time I went into the bathroom, I was like quickly trying to hurry because it's like, I don't want to have to answer the phone in the bathroom. Like that's embarrassing. So yeah, um, then I'm home, I'm relaxing and I get the call and he actually says he offered the position to two other candidates. He said I was a really strong candidate and if other positions come up in his school or in the school district to not hesitate to give him a call um, I'm guessing that means he would like vouch for me or something. I'm not really sure exactly what that meant But I, I feel like that's a good thing, right? I mean, I still didn't get the job, which I don't know why I didn't really ask him on the phone I honestly was pretty upset and let me show you just a short clip of me like just being really really upset about it Just because I kind of felt like a failure a little bit I'm feeling pretty sad <laughs> I mean, that's the third interview now. Like, what am I doing wrong? I just... <laughs> it just sucks. So yeah, you could see um, it was pretty upsetting to me. And again, like I said, that full year position would have been the... You know, I feel like my ticket to getting a full-time position. So I was really, really upset. Um, but anywho, fast forward maybe an hour later and I was doing a lot better and I, I'll just show you guys a short clip from that as well. And I'm not going to sit here and say everything happens for a reason and I totally understand why it happened. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't get why I'm not getting these jobs. Maybe I need to reevaluate how I'm doing in interviews or what my resume says or what's going on with my references. I don't really know. The tutor job is actually going pretty good. The lady I work with is fabulous and I really love her and you know to be honest if I was going to get this job she would have been the one I, I would have missed the most and re been really sad to have to tell her about getting a different job so yeah you can see i was better a little bit later i was really upset about it but after talking to family and friends uh i just realized that my time will come something will come up hopefully this reading readiness teacher position might help me a lot as well especially being in a title one school and working with small students or like small groups of students to support them in their reading and math and just kind of being able to say like a reading readiness teacher uh, I think will be helpful hopefully <laughs> um, during the interview it was a little bit hard to explain like no I'm not a sub but I'm like a reading teacher kind of um, was a little bit awkward but you know somebody suggested in the comments to apply to like a support staff position and that's how I kind of ended up here so I really hope you guys kind of continue to follow my journey and are interested in this. I definitely want to post videos about this position, especially 
for you guys who are maybe curious, you know, you're teachers and you want to see kind of what the behind the scenes stuff is um, for you people <clears throat> or for the, you know, teachers and people out there who are also having a hard time getting a job, this could be a path that you take. Um, to be honest, I'm really enjoying it and I think it's kind of fun to work with these students one-on-one. -on -one. I'm gonna really start diving into it in the next few weeks, so I'd like to make some videos for you guys about that. Um, I just wanted to give you some tips that I use to prepare for this interview, and I got a lot of them from my friend who, um, she's in her second year of teaching, she's a third grade teacher, and these were some of the tips that she used and gave to me. So the first tip is practicing a lot, and her and I just did a mock interview over the phone. She asked me some questions, I gave her a response, and then she would kind of give me feedback on what she thought I did really well or what I could improve on. The second tip is probably to script out some answers. Now obviously you're not going to be saying those answers word for word, but she was saying it really helped her and it really helped me because you're able to, you know, you usually get the same questions. It's like, tell us about yourself. What's your classroom management? Um, how do you like create a nurturing environment? Typically there's something about reading or math. Um, how are you, how would you close the achievement gap? Different things like that. So you can script out those answers, especially classroom management. They ask you, in different ways but it's always kind of the same general question so scripting those questions out can be really helpful and I found them to be especially helpful right before the interview to just read over them and just remember all the points that I want to talk about I think that was really helpful the third one is the third um, is to really research I mean if you're really wanting to get the job like I was research, 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 and write those notes down so you can look over them and be ready for any of those questions. So they ask one about Literacy Collaborative, which is basically like Reader's Workshop, Writer's Workshop, Daily Five. That's kind of the um, overarching umbrella of this kind of idea. And the Constructivist Learning Theory. And I wrote lots of notes about those and it really helped me in my interview. So if you don't know kind of what questions they might ask, um, I definitely recommend looking through the website and just writing whatever catches your eye that you could talk about in your interview. And then asking really good follow-up questions at the end, you know, when they're like, do you have any questions for us? Um, I have some awesome ones. I don't currently have them with me, but I will include them on the screen and yeah so the first one he asked me and I'll include it right here I can't remember what it is off the top of my head but he had just some general responses to what kind of professional development they do but I think that really shows an interviewer that I'm excited to learn I want to become a better teacher what are the opportunities that you have for me as an educator even if I am a long-term sub or whatever um, what opportunities do I have to just learn more? And then the second question, which I'll put down here, um, he also had some really great responses that I definitely wanna use in my next interview. Things like asking questions. So when they ask like, what's your experience working on a team or in PLCs or whatever, you can say, I really like to ask questions to become a better educator, different things like that. Um, so asking questions was one of the things that he really looked for in a successful educator. Um, he also said community writing, which is a big part of their literacy collaborative. Not always applicable to every teacher, but that's something I will definitely um, work on, including in my responses to questions. And he also said just like loving and caring about students, which I did say in my interview response but that's something that he really looks for in a successful educator so those are just some of the different things that I did again I dress really nicely I try to have a smile on my face eye contact 
Um, my, I don't even know what I'm on, but my next tip is probably make sure that if you're gonna do all this prep, make sure that your resume and everything is ready to go. He did ask for mine. That was the first time that he's asked for it. And um, I, which I don't think this like made or broke my interview, but I did give him an older resume and I, it didn't include like my most recent experience, which wasn't a big deal, but um, it's definitely something that threw me off, I think for the rest of the interview because I saw that I gave him the wrong one. I should have been confident enough to say, you know what, I'm so sorry, my like real resume is in here, but during the time I was just so flustered and whatever that I just wasn't thinking about doing that. But yeah, having those resumes and your cover letter in the right place are going to save you a lot of embarrassment and um, like frustration and being flustered during your interview. If you just have those ready before you even get there. I had them in my portfolio, but I just didn't have them in my pad folio and that's what I had out ready to go. So yeah, have those things ready, you guys. Um, anyways, this video is really long, so I'm gonna let you guys go and I will catch you in the next one. I'll probably show you guys my desk and different things about my tutor job so that you guys have a better understanding of kind of what I'm gonna be doing for the next year. And I really hope you continue to follow my journey because, you know, I want to be able to show you my first year of teaching and all of that. So thank you all for your support and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.